representative of Reed Scott with our chief executive, and we're honored to have been asked to do that. So let's switch now to the White House in Washington, D.C. And Mr. President, as a former sportscaster yourself, I wonder if you critique the work of Charlie Jones and the NBC crew tonight. Well, I think it's been just great, and I've been enjoying every minute of this. I, of course, have to tell you that having done all of my broadcasting on radio, I, uh, I don't envy those of you who have to talk on television because I liked it better when the audience had to wait to find out from you what was going on. Mr. President, I'm sure as a former sports broadcaster and a man experienced in the media, you'll appreciate this problem. The nation can hear you, and I can't. So I'll just have to roll with the punches on the interview as we're having some technical difficulties. I know that one of your first experiences as a sports broadcaster, in fact, your audition was to recreate a football broadcast, and that's how you got your first job. Could you tell us about that? Yes. As a matter of fact, my first time on the air to broadcast was to broadcast the Iowa-Minnesota uh, homecoming football game. But the uh, it's true, the audition was you might say almost an accident. I had been knocking on doors and asking for jobs for a, a long time and hitchhiking around the Middle West and uh, discouraged once again as I left the office of a program director at WOC Davenport, WHO Des Moines, I <clears throat> said, just expressed the desire that I'd like to be a sports announcer. And fortunately, the elevator wasn't at the floor when I got there because this gentleman came hobbling down. He was uh, somewhat handicapped and two canes, caught me at the elevator and said, what's that you said about sports? I told him uh, that's what I wanted to do. And he asked me if I could imagine a football game and tell him about it. And I said, I thought I could. He took me in a studio, my first time to ever be in a radio studio, stood me in front of a mic, said, when the red light goes on, start broadcasting an imaginary football game. Well, I didn't exactly imagine it. Uh, the previous season, I was just fresh out of college. The previous season, we had won a game in the last 20 seconds with an off-tackle smash in which I, as the right guard, was supposed to take the first man in the secondary, which made it possible for our quarterback to make the play. And in the game, I missed my block. And I don't know to this day how Bud Cole scored as he did. I didn't miss the block in the recreation. I delivered a block that I described <laughs> in great detail and cleared the path for Bud Cole. But it was a, I chose to go in the fourth quarter in about 15 minutes of all of that and then that fabulous touchdown finish and finally just grabbed the stem of the mic and said, that's all I can do. He came in and told me to be there Saturday. I was broadcasting the Iowa-Minnesota game. Mr. President, I know you have strong feelings about the proper place of college sports in America, keeping it in proper perspective. Would you share those thoughts with us, please? Well, yes. I think it's awfully easy to get carried away and sort of make players uh, feel that they're not really students of the college. They're sort of hired hands to be there and play. Uh, I hope that isn't widespread, and I don't think it should be. I think that... Uh, the old college try and the college spirit is really the thing that, that makes college football great. And I think that the students are there or the, the players are there as students and uh, they should be there with that in mind. And I think, I, yeah. Go ahead, finish your story please, sir. No, no, I was just, I was just going to say, I think that a number of schools are coming around to that realization. I. I first heard what it was like from a fellow who had been a star quarterback on a big university team. And I'm not going to name the university, but he quit and he came to the school that I had gone to, a little college in Illinois called Eureka College. Because he lived in an athletic dorm, he ate at an athletic table, uh, he just wasn't, didn't feel that he was a member of the student body. And he came to that little school where Hey, he loved it. Mr. President, we all wish you well as you face surgery in the next few days, and we want to extend from all of us here at NBC Sports our thanks for the time you spent with us, and a happy new year to you. Well, thank you, a happy new year to you, and uh, your good wishes. It really, uh, what I'm going in for is kind of a breeze. Uh, I've been there before. So uh, 
don't waste any sympathy. I, I don't feel ill at all. But um, I'm enjoying this game, and it's, it's been a thriller, and uh, I'll be watching for this, for this next half. Thanks very much, Mr. President. The kickoff is coming up shortly to start the third quarter, and we'll continue following these messages from your local station.